Welcome to the program. The other Region 2 coach, uh, the other Region 2 champion head coach, that's Richard Lewis of Jefferson. They get the win last night, pull away 66-44 to over Spring Mills. They're going back to Charleston for the third straight season. How are you doing today, Coach Lewis? Good. How you guys doing? We're doing great, and you guys are going to make your third straight trip down to Charleston. Uh, how does it feel to know that you've been able to put three teams back-to-back-to-back to back to back together that have uh, been enough to get out of the region? It was great. Um, really happy for the players, um, especially like the senior seniors, and then also the senior Will Shabley. Um, he's been to three consecutive um, state tournaments out of four years. So that's just a great accomplishment. Jaden Gladney's been there three years in a row since he's been a freshman. So just really happy for them um, to go through that experience. It's just, it's just awesome for Jefferson High School and the community as well. Um, and know that, you know, Jefferson High School is back on the map in the state of West Virginia in basketball. Coach, both of these games uh, for you in the sectional championship and the regional championship, uh, pretty close at halftime, but you guys were able to find ways to pull away. What do you think uh, has been kind of the difference in the second halves of these last two games? Uh, defensively, we, we've uh, made a couple adjustments here or there, but I think just overall the team is really locked in. Um, defensively, uh, both in both in both halves, um, second quarter uh, a little bit, but then the third quarter we came out with that edge and basically just you know back to back games only get four points in the third quarter. So I think defensively that was the key, um, and just overall the team just coming together, playing really sound team defense. Uh, whether it be a man, whether it be a zone, whether it be pressing, uh, whether it be trapping, just overall just. Our uh, attention was super high. Um, attention to detail was really high. So overall, they just, they just been locked in um, coming out of halftime. Coach Lewis, Colin McLaughlin here. Congrats on the win again. As we said earlier, three straight years now, your guys get to go to the state tournament. Uh, if any, what are some similarities and some differences that you've seen from uh, those three teams? Um, similarities. We played well at the right time. <laughs> you know, just. Um, I think each team has been kind of similar in, in, in stature as far as height, um, things like that. Our style of play, of course, has been the same. But, you know, just coming together at the right time, um, getting a lot of balance, too, like Ty Vickers stepping up off the bench, um, having uh, Moses Talley come in here three last night. So just having, like, you know, a lot of, a lot of depth um, is kind of similar. Uh, I thought last year we might not have been as deep as we were this year, the year before, we were really, really deep. Um, in 2020, 2021, COVID year, we went down there. I thought we were about 11, 10, 11 deep. Last year, we wasn't as deep, uh, even though our record was better. Um, but I think this year, we have, we're having a lot of a lot of similarities to two years ago as far as our bench is playing really well right now. Um, and they're coming in, playing just as well as starters. Uh, we haven't missed a beat um, when we come off the bench with um, some key pieces like Ty Nickers, Colin Johnson, Moses Talley, Chad Gore. Um, all those guys are stepping up. So I think similarities to two years ago uh, when we played about 10 guys consistently. Uh, so that kind of reminds me of the 2021-2020 team. And, Coach, we've talked earlier in the year about the competition that you put on this uh, schedule this year. Uh, you know, didn't perform as well as you probably liked in those games that you had. Uh, but how do you take what you learned in that game and take it to uh, redemption against, you know, those teams in Charleston? I think it was great. Um, our seeding didn't we, – we didn't get the credit for it, which is fine. Um, and i got to understand it's a vote. Uh, we vote the top 16 – the 16 coaches, they vote 1 through 15. So – and everybody's voting that didn't see you play. So – um, you know, you got three. You got three coaches that's voting that saw you play, um, unless you played some of those teams, which we did. Um, so I'm not sure how the vote went, but I think we didn't get the credit for you know the schedule we played, which is fine. Um, same with Rick Reddy. You know, they're they're one of the top teams in this region, um, Maryland, DC, and they were 27 to seven this year. So we played them. You know, played them a tough, a tough team. Um, they be a national ranked team, Mount St. Joe. So. And then we went down Charleston on the road, went to Morgantown on the road. Um, and that's tough to do uh, for, for any high school team, um, with any team alone to go play those type of teams on the road um, and come out victorious. So if we would have won those games, then we'd probably be number one seed. So if I look at it, 
Um, so not winning those games kind of made us a seven seed, which is fine. Um, and then losing to the Hedgesville twice didn't help, you know, help matters at all either because, you know, we won the EPAC and pretty much had, you know, had the best record in the area, but we still didn't get rewarded for doing that. So, you know, we just got to go back and look at the schedule and figure some things out differently in the future. But I think overall playing GW um, already and going to Charleston already, um, I think it's going to help us. I think it'll give us a gauge of, you know, where we're at. We had to work on since since February 6th or 7th when we played them. So I think uh, having a tough schedule, um, I think it will reward us on the court more so than the season. But, you know, I'm not I'm not mad about it. Um, I think um, it's just, you know, how it works when you have a human element um, and Fulton involved. Coach, uh, you mentioned GW, and, and it will be a ter- tough first-round matchup for you. They ended your season in uh, 2020. Um, you guys lost to them earlier this year, but uh, and they also, you know, provide some difficult matchups in terms of being a pretty tall team. So, how do you, I guess, take what you do already saw and uh, facing them earlier this year and try to do some things to be a little bit more competitive and potentially pull off the win as well? Well, you know, the height is always going to be an issue for us. Um, that's one of the reasons we played some of the teams that we played um, so we can have that, you know, that gauge, uh, whether it be Morgantown, you know, 6'7", um, across, whether it be Maria Gray, 6'9", 6'6", you know. So we won't go into those games. Um, a Gainesville, you know, from Virginia that was, you know, 6'8", 6'7". So we won't go into those games, you know, um, not having faced that competition because in the EPAC, Besides Spring Mills, we don't really have, you know, a lot of height in this area. So um, I think playing them again, uh, playing them earlier, being familiar with them is going to help us. Um, overall, I think some adjustments we can make. Um, and, and, and it'll be different, too, as far as, you got to remember, we drove down there the day of the game against South Charleston, played them on a the back-to-back um, at 4.30 after playing at 7.30 and then coming right back home. And they didn't play since, you know, Friday. So, you know, some of those things you got to take into consideration. And we didn't play very well. I think we shot 11%. Um, and that's not Jefferson basketball. So the biggest thing is I think we got to figure out, and I said it last night uh, when I got interviewed, we got to figure out how to shoot better at the Charleston Coliseum. So that's our main goal um, is to get that thing figured out between now and Tuesday. Because I think if we can come out and play how you guys have seen us play, um, and some of the games we played this year, I think will be a tough match for anybody down there. So we've got to figure out how we can shoot better um, in that Coliseum between now and uh, Tuesday. Because I think if we can figure that part out, that'll take away some of the adjustments that we that that'll be the main adjustment. Um, and then some of the things of basketball wise, you know, defensively we gotta we gotta show up. They got a really really good player that's going to Ohio University. He's about six seven. Um, He's going to. He has a full ride, Division One athlete. So we got a tough matchup. Um, no matter how you shake it against him and the, some of their shooters, and they shot about eighty percent, eighty five percent in the first quarter against us. They went hundred percent, five five from three. So we got to take away their three point shot. We got to make sure that we match it with shooters. So we got to do a lot of things different than we did the first game. But I think overall, you can kind of throw some of those things out um, that happened in that game and. And kind of look at it like we didn't play Jefferson basketball. Um, we know we don't shoot 11 percent for the game from three point range, so um, we'll see. You just mentioned that your team needs to find a way to shoot better down in the Charleston Coliseum, and you have until Tuesday to do so. What are some things that you're getting set up to prepare your team for that? Uh, we're gonna practice Shepherd um, Saturday morning um, and go through there. So that's going to be one adjustment we're going to try to make. Try to get on a bigger court with a bigger backdrop. Um, they have a real practice, have a full practice there. Not a walkthrough, not a shoot around, but just have a real, you know, live practice and go up and down and just, you know, get used to being in that type of environment. Even though it's not the Coliseum per se, but it's similar with the, the Hydro Ribs and the backdrop. So um, that'll help us. And then we'll try to get somewhere on Monday. Um, as we go down or as we when we get there, uh, whether it be right back at State where we played that already or University of Charleston 
or maybe stop somewhere on the way in practice. I still haven't really decided, but um, we just got to just got to shoot better. I think some of it too is, um, you know, just getting out, just when we're there, just being confident in the shooting of basketball. Um, cause we we've had games where we haven't shot well in the area, but we've never shot that uh, how we shoot down there. So we just gotta um, play with confidence and, and shoot with confidence. Coach, uh, this is the, your third trade trip. Um, you mentioned kind of your seeding earlier, and I guess how do you how do you feel about being the seventh seed? And I think last year, uh, even though you were undefeated, you were the two seed, um, and and Hedgesville receives a six. How do you think that the pack has been, I guess, judged over the years? Well, truth be told, I, I didn't want to play at nine thirty, so, <laughs> so it was like it was like to me like I told him I said I'd rather be seven. Like seven, eight, or uh, four, five, because <laughs> I, I really didn't want to play that the nine thirty game. I mean, I don't mind it, but it's just it's, to me it's a tough, it's a tough pre- prep. Um, good luck to Hedgesville and um, Parker versus off on that one, but nine thirty is a tough prep um, as far as just getting ready for a basketball game. But overall, I think you know the Eastern Panhandle um, besides Martinsburg from from what I've seen, um, just doing research on seedings besides Martinsburg. And the one year Washington went down, I mean, I don't think anybody's been a one um, besides Martinsburg to has been down there. If you look at kind of like the history of, you know, Washington and Martinsburg were ones on um, the year they were undefeated. But other than that, um, we know we don't get any ones. Um, so if you only get the first team, uh, normally be around three or four or five, and then the second team is always going to be seven or eight. That's kind of how it normally works. Um, it's similar to girls basketball. So we got a really good team with a really good record, um, and that's why I think some of the teams don't play um, a tough schedule as we did this year because of that. Um, and, you know, you live and you learn from that. So you, that way you can get the 20 wins or 19 wins or 22 wins, and that will give you a better season as well. So um, sometimes it can backfire when you when you play, you know, the kind of schedule we played. Uh, where you on the road against those, you know, top teams and you're playing the same way you're ready. So I think the EPAC as a whole, we're a really good league. But for us to get a better seed, we either got to go undefeated like we did last year um, and you still get a one or two. Or if you play a tough schedule, you got to win those games. Um, if you're going to play a South Charleston, because they're never going to come here and play us. So we got to go down there and actually win the games in Charleston or Wheeling or wherever we're going to go. Um, so cause they're, they'll never really come here. You'll never see a team travel six hours and play us. So it's one of those things where you almost got to kind of pick your poison. You can go with a, with a softer schedule and get your wins up and get a higher seed. Or um, if you can find a way to get some of those teams to come play you here, um, you know, it might help you if you can get those wins. But if you go on the road, you got to win. And we didn't get it done in the games we won on the road against Morgan Channel, South Charleston, and GW. So you're going to get a six or a seven or EC if that happens. Coach Lewis, thanks for the time. Best of luck on Tuesday. Hope we're talking a few more times.